Okay, so what's up guys? Welcome back to yet another video. Just within few months of Nothing Phone 1 launch, we have got the first custom ROM for Nothing Phone 1 which is called Paranoid Android. And that's based on Android 13. It's still in beta phase. I don't recommend anyone to flash it on your primary phone. But if you have knowledge about custom ROMs, then you can anytime flash it. At the end of video, I've also shown how to install Paranoid Android step-by-step -step guide which includes unlocking bootloader and later flashing the Paranoid Android. Also guys, we have a Nothing Phone 1 Telegram group. If you have any kind of questions related to this device or this custom ROM, then you guys can join a Telegram group. Link of that can be found in the description below. So here you can see I have my Nothing Phone 1. I've already installed Paranoid Android and I've been using this device since yesterday. Talking about the software information, here you can see Android version is Android 13 which comes with 5th September 2022 security patch. And guys before moving ahead let's keep a like target of 500 likes on this video we still have 82 percent of users who haven't subscribed to our channel so if you guys find our videos helpful to you do consider subscribing and also press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video first let me show you the benchmark results so i did test out using geekbench application and to do and we also ran cpu throttling test here you can see single core have scored 820 and multi core have scored 2917 with and to benchmark application our nothing phone one have scored 5,90,800 101 and I did not notice any kind of throttling issues in CPU throttling test where you can see maximum CPU throttled up to 95% and there were no drops to be seen in the graph. Basic functionalities like calling which includes Wi-Fi calling services, Bluetooth and double tap to sleep gesture works perfectly fine. Also fingerprint unlock is quite faster. But if you are the one who uses face unlock feature, so you guys won't find face unlock feature here. Only one thing we have that's fingerprint unlock option. Okay, so as you all know, Nothing Phone comes with that Glyph interface, which is one of the highlight of this particular phone. And if you are the one who wants the Glyph interface, like everything to be working fine, then this ROM doesn't have all the functionalities. Right now you can see there are only few things which you can use under Glyph interface. One is battery level and the charging dot, nothing else. In future, we'll see full support of Glyph interface. With my initial impressions, I can say the RAM management is too good on Paranoid Android, but sometimes animations do feel choppy. I'm not complaining here, but as you all know, it's an alpha build. These things are expected. Overall animations are pretty smooth, but sometimes it do feels little bit choppy and laggy. Now talking about the quick setting tiles, this is how it gonna look on Paranoid Android. I seriously did not like the quick setting tiles, those circular tiles which used to be on Nothing OS. According to me, I did not find brightness calibration that good, though it works fine, but sometimes it do behaves weird. As it's based on Android 13, so you'll have everything including material you theming part, themed icon support and many more. We do get the option to change the system icon packs and even fonts. Remember one thing guys, Paranoid is not meant for customization. Roams like Paranoid, Pixel, Lineage, these are known for its stability and great battery backup. One good thing which I liked on Paranoid Android is we don't have any kind of restrictions of screen recording. Here we do get extra options like device audio and microphone at the same time can be recorded. And one of the thing which I liked on this room, now you can record videos in higher resolution which wasn't the case on Nothing OS. Nothing OS is capped at 720p but that's not the case here. Let me show you one of the screen recordings. So here I have a gameplay which I did record and talking about the resolution. So here you can see I can record screen in 2400 into 1080 pixels. So good job done by Paranoid team. Talking about dark mode, so here you do get the pitch dark theme instead of that grayish theme which we see on Nothing OS. And not everyone likes that grayish background after enabling dark mode. Also most users if they flash custom room they are always worried about the widewind certification. So on this room we do get the security level of L1. But if I talk about the applications like Netflix, if you see here playback specification it's only supporting SD and we don't have the HDR capabilities. Here it shows Widewind certification as L3 but in DRM info it shows L1. All the payments do works fine. Also Play Store is certified. Let me show you guys. Here you can see device is certified so you won't have any kind of issues using payment services. And the ROM also passes through safety net check. And now talking about haptics, here on this ROM I did notice haptic feedback seems to be a little bit softer compared to Nothing OS. But it's a personal preference guys, you may or may not like the haptic feedback. I did not find it that crisp.
Speaker quality is equivalent to stock OS with good suppression and kind of balance audio and stereo speakers. And now talking about one of the issues which I used to notice on Nothing OS and that's related to refresh rate. And here if you see it do takes bit extra time to move to 60 and this glitch we had also seen on Nothing OS wherein for one second it instantly switched to 60 and back to 120. Variable refresh rate I think it's still an issue with Nothing OS and the same thing is on Paranoid 2. Most of the applications do support 120Hz including applications like Play Store and even YouTube. And as it's a official build of Paranoid Android, so if any update arise for this particular ROM, you can easily download it over the air aka OTA. And the last thing, you won't get nothing OS camera here, instead of that you'll get Google Go camera application pre-installed. It's a quite good application and Google camera is known for clicking some great pictures. And talking about the performance part, so basically I play Battlegrounds Mobile India on daily basis. So I did play few TDMs and while playing TDM, with no doubt device was constantly handling 60 FPS. There were some issues wherein I did find game lagging a bit and that did happen twice or thrice in few of my TDM matches. Here is a small gameplay which you guys can take a look at. And now talking about some of the known bugs which officials have mentioned and one of them is related to network carrier. We do have the support of 5G but some carriers might indicate 4G on the status bar. But you can easily ignore it, actually that's 5G if 5G is present. Second known issue is related to Bluetooth so here as per the developers LDAC playback is broken. And they also mentioned that few HDR videos might lag after few seconds and yes slight lags can be seen here while playing the HDR videos. And now let's move on to the installation guide. Okay now talking about the installation process of Paranoid Android and Nothing Phone 1. So basically you require these three files. One is ADB setup, platform tool and then the ROM file which is of Paranoid Android based on Android 13. If you guys have any kind of issues installing ADB drivers and platform tools, basically platform tools you just have to unzip the file and you are good to go. But still if you guys face any kind of issues, here is a dedicated video on installing and fixing any issue related to fastboot ADB or Qualcomm. So just check it out. Or else you can just follow the guide which I am showing here on the screen. First of all you have to extract the ADB folder and also the platform tools folder or you can say zip file and guys there are few users who are facing issues like you know they get an error that text file not found while installing paranoid android what you have to do is for that you need to make sure you are downloading the correct zip file so there are two zip files make sure you download the zip file which consists of image at the end it is not an image file but make sure the file which you are downloading consists of image at the end. After that you just have to install the ADB drivers, double click on the folder extracted one and here we have the setup file, allow all the necessary permissions, type Y and hit enter, again Y to install ADB system wide and if you don't see any kind of errors here you can see it says 4 files copied. You are good to go again, you want to install drivers, type Y and hit enter. A new window will pop up, hit next. And here you can see it says ready to use and you are done with the ADB drivers. Now what you have to do is you need to place this ROM file in the platform folder, platform tools folder. So here we have the extracted folder of platform tools. Just copy this file and place it inside this particular folder. Double click. You can also place it inside the ADB folder which is being created after installing ADB drivers. But it's okay you can just paste the ROM file in the platform tools folder. Once you do that now you need to open up command prompt and after that what you have to do is go to settings about phone tap on software info and here tap on build number seven times until you see you are a developer now once you have enabled the developer option what you have to do is go back go to settings developer option from here you need to enable oem unlocking and make sure guys you remove all your pin or patterns whatever you have on your device after that allow usb debugging if you see any pop-up on the screen just allow the permissions and now let's open the command prompt and unlock the bootloader of the device. Later we'll flash the ROM file. So here in the address bar just type cmd and hit enter. Now give a command adb devices to check whether adb drivers have been properly installed or not. Hit enter 
If you see the serial number that means your device is properly connected and you have good to go ADB drivers. Now we'll boot a device into fast boot mode to unlock the device. Guys remember one thing unlocking bootloader will wipe the entire data of your device so make sure to take a backup before proceeding. Now let's boot a device into bootloader mode or you can say fast boot mode. For that give command ADB reboot bootloader and hit enter. Now a device should boot into fast boot mode. Now here you can see a device have successfully booted into fast boot mode and device state also says logged. And guys here before unlocking your bootloader make sure to take a backup of your device because unlocking bootloader will wipe the entire data including internal storage. So first let's check whether a device is properly connected in fast boot mode or not by giving command fast boot devices and hit enter. So here you can see we have another serial number that means our device is properly connected. Now we'll give the command to unlock the bootloader. So command is fast boot flashing unlock. Once you give this command just hit enter and you'll see a warning on your device. Using volume key select the bottom option which says unlock bootloader and make selection using power key. Now device will perform a factory reset and again boot into system. So let's wait for the device to boot up and after that I'll show you how to flash the ROM file. And once you unlock you will always see this warning how we get to see on oneplus smartphones. So after your device have successfully booted up just complete the initial setup no need to add your google account or anything. Now just go to settings about section tap on the software info and again tap on build number 7 times until you see you are a developer now. After that go back developer option and now here you can see a device have been unlocked and we cannot disable the OEM unlocking. Just enable USB debugging allow any necessary permission if you see any kind of pop up and now let's flash the ROM file. So here we have the ROM let's open up command prompt and boot a device into fast boot mode by giving command adb reboot bootloader. So here you can see a device has successfully booted up into fast boot mode and under device state it says unlocked. So a device have been successfully unlocked. Now let's flash the paranoid android ROM and guys as I said earlier make sure to use the file which consists of image because this is the fast boot file and we are using the fast boot method to flash the ROM. Just give the command fast boot update then drag and drop this zip file. Hit enter. and the installation process should start. It will take around 5 to 7 minutes. Once it's completed, we'll get back to you guys. So we have successfully flashed the paranoid android on our nothing phone one. So once you flash your device will again boot into recovery. From here you need to format the device. So here you have an option to format just use the volume down key to navigate to format this device and make selection using power key. Select factory reset data again press power key. And now your device should successfully boot into Paranoid Android 13. There you can see the boot animation of Paranoid Android. So here you can see a device have been successfully booted and now you can enjoy Paranoid Android on your Nothing Phone 1. So guys this was a quick look on the initial build of Paranoid Android for Nothing Phone 1. If you still have any kind of questions do let me know in the comment section below. As of now only this much in this video I hope you guys gonna like the video. If you like the video then do give me a thumbs up and also if you are new to our channel then do not forget to subscribe the channel. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.